A letter entitled Research on the Nature of the Odor and Certain Chemical Reactions was presented to the Academics the Sciences in Paris by C.F. Schoenbein in 1840. Schoenbein was unable to determine the origin of the chemical species that he had found or to characterize its structure, but named the mysterious pungent smelling molecule ozone. Ozone. A few years later, J.L. Surratt identified the compound as O3. In 1879 to 81, W. N. Hartley and A. Cornu measured the ultraviolet radiation reaching the surface of the Earth and found a sharp cutoff, which they correctly attributed to ozone. These pioneering measurements also showed that the bulk of the ozone must be in the upper atmosphere rather than near ground level. The ozone layer had been discovered. There's no UV radiation down here, so it must be being blocked by something like the ozone layer. In 1928, an industrial chemist named T. Midgley was asked to develop a non-flammable, non-toxic compound to replace the hazardous compound, such as ammonia, then used in home refrigerators. Within two days, he selected chlorofluorocarbons as the ideal refrigerant. In a dramatic de demonstration of its complete safety for living things, Midgley personally inhaled the compound. <coughs> During the 1950s, chlorofluorocarbons came into widespread use in varieties of applications, particularly for refrigeration and later in air conditioning, spray cans and foams, and as solvents. The chlorofluorocarbons were hailed as miracle chemicals. Yay! <laughs> Theoretical calculations suggested that continuing the use of CFCs might cause about a 5% depletion of the ozone layer in 100 years or so. Concern over the possible future depletion of the Earth's ozone layer by the action of chlorofluorocarbons led to the United States, Canada, Norway, and Sweden to ban their use in nearly all spray cans in their, century, in their countries. Global use of chlorofluorocarbons slowed significantly. Chlorofluorocarbon use began to increase again in the early 1980s, due in part to their use as cleaning agents in the rapidly expanding electronics industry. Home insulation and foam blowing applications were also booming. Gr growing populations and worldwide industrial development create an expanding market. More CFCs. In 1985, scientists from the British Antarctic Survey reported their observations of a deepening depletion in the springtime ozone layer above Hal Halley Bay, Antarctica. Their work was quickly confirmed by measurements from satellites and, other, and from other Antarctic research stations, including the South Pole and Soiwa. The phenomenon became known as the ozone hole. The observed change in ozone was about 40% in, in 1985, as compared to projections of about 55 in 100 years, raising fears that ozone depletion may have drastically underestimated. Oh, look at all that UV radiation. Oh man. I'm getting to the earth. No way.
Argentine, they say, now I've seen it.